This is the Red Oliver Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Jane Ogway, Craig Wood and Andy Simcox. Tonight we are talking all about Barnsley's League Cup exit to Tranmere, a two-all draw and we lost in a dramatic penalty shootout. So we're going to be talking all about that. Uh, we're going to be looking ahead to Bristol Rovers. We'll have your comments of the week. Uh, so thank you so much for all your comments. Some big news. Yes, the big news will be revealed as I promised last week that we'd have some big news for this show in terms of our prediction competition. Get your prediction in for Bristol Rovers away. And just loads of other stuff. We're going to talk about extra, extra time. There's loads of it. So but we're not going to be adding 10 minutes onto this show just because there's extra time in the games. So you'll be happy about that. Let's get into it. Right then, gang. Let's let's chat about that game then. League Cup, last night. I particularly enjoyed it because I got I got I got to see what it's like for the other half, you know. For the how the other half live, Andy. I got to sit in the east stand, fancy get, snap. Get a flatbread. I, I even got to go all the way to rafters where Andy sits, right at top, last seat. With pigeons. Last seat with pigeons. With pigeons. I couldn't see not a thing because I don't, you know, I've not got my glasses on at that minute. But Andy even gets himself a little, he's even got a little thing behind him where he puts his pork pies, aren't you, Andy? I mean, it, um, unbelievable, honestly. That is, east stand is, it's, it's class. Flatbread. <laughs> Flatbread. The, Didn't see any good, flatbreads though. Aww. Must have been Tuesday night cup game. Yeah. The good the good thing of being back right at the back of the stand is that you've got, as you've seen then, Joe, a shelf behind you, you've got plenty of room behind you to put stuff down without kicking it over, without upsetting anybody. It just it, you know, we put your coats, your drinks. Last night, last night it was Scotch eggs and Bovril. So I can you know, all ring, we don't, ring, ring we don't changes. Get this. It's ring just the changes. home comforts, isn't it, Andy? It's just it, what you like. It, it is. He come up. Joe nearly got a nosebleed. I helped him back down the steps because it were a bit too high up for him. Yeah, Danny, it, it makes me feel sick. Danny Finney were about twelve seats below us, and he couldn't. He couldn't get his set up mainly because he's idle. But he could, well, he couldn't get up because you know he'd have fallen over. You know what he's like. So yeah, he finally got a. He finally saw what it's like watching a game at the San Siro. So it definitely <laughs> felt like a completely different experience to my seats, fairly low down in the pond. I, I, I did miss the, I did miss my atmosphere. So I think I'll return to the Ponty for uh, for Barnsley versus Peter. Like week. watching a bunch of ants, wasn't it? Up from yeah, all, there. all these little dots <laughs> like on an old computer yeah. game. Let's talk about the uh the cup exit. So quite a, a dramatic game in terms of, you know, Barnsley sneaking it in a last minute, which I actually thought it was going to go to extra time. So that's my lack of knowledge about the League Cup at this point. Um, and I actually said to our killer, I says, watch as equalise it last minute so we have to stay for another half an hour and then penalties. But it went straight to penalties. Yeah. So I, I was wrong about that. Uh, so I didn't mind staying. Um, but we did lose in the penalty shootout. So talking through the game, Tramia, yeah, I mean... Craig, what did you think to it? I thought Tranmere fully deserved to get through, to be honest. I didn't think we were at his best. Obviously, you're a very changed side, but yeah. I think um, the game it said, I think we're fairly poor. There weren't really much quality out there from either team. I thought they, they just edged it if anybody did. But I think that come with the experience of their team. Their team were a lot older than ours. We had a lot of young, young players in the squad. Um, but also, I didn't think anybody... And it, this, were, this were the perfect time for the likes of Ollie Shaw and the rest of them to put the names forward to be first team, and I don't think any of them did enough. Um, I think there were a couple of good performances. Winfield, I thought, left wing back, played fairly well. Um, started cramping up towards end, which, you know, it's a, it's been a, test, what a, a fairly testing game for him, being up and down all the time. I also thought Neyman, when he came on, looked OK. Um, but the huge disappointment for me were the front two. I thought the front two would have really grabbed the bull by the horns in this game, and I thought, I, they didn't involve themselves enough. They really didn't. Um, I thought Ollie Shaw were... They, they did a lot of clothes. They, what they did is a Bradshaw-esque show. Now, Bradshaw-esque yeah. means basically you do a lot of running, but not much else. Yeah. And that's pretty much what I saw. Uh, Shepard, young centre-back. I like him. I think he's got some good raw qualities there, he, I, his aerial ability. His passing seems to be pretty good for a player of his age. Um, obviously, I think I think there's some things he needs to improve on, which I think he will get here. So that they were they were the only real positives for me. Um, other than that, I'm not too bothered about staying in this cup. It's always FA Cup I've enjoyed. Yeah. Um, League Cup I'm not too fussed about. So less fixture congestion, more time for players to um, get the sins ready for the next 
uh, match in league, and that'll do me. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Andy, what did you think to John Russell's performance? Because he's he's an interesting one for me, because we didn't see the best of him last season. We didn't get to see much of him, to be fair, because our midfield was so good. Obviously, circumstances have meant he's played the first two two games, obviously 7-0 win against Port Vale, and then and then that draw against uh, Tranmere and exit from the Cup. I thought he, again, looked really good. Obviously, a big part in the first goal, um, you know, Herbie Kane's goal, which obviously was an absolute scream. I mean, keeper were never saving that. You know, what could what could Joe Murphy do? <laughs> That's sarcasm, yeah. by the way, <laughs> just in case you didn't see it. I think, I think he had a really good... I think he had a good game last night. I think he had a, a pretty good game on Saturday, to be honest, as well. I think he started the season pretty well. Um, you know, we're all obviously a bit... Uh, a bit concerned when Luke O'Connell wasn't playing on Saturday, and then yeah, obviously last night. But he's 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 gone into that that space, and it's different. Remember, it's a slightly different setup. It's not quite um, as we had last season. You know, we, so we've got a player just behind the front two, or almost making a third one. A bit like when we had um, uh, Luke Thomas playing. You know, before he got injured. So I th- I thought he, he knitted it to together well and he played well with uh, with Herbie Kane I thought together they did all right I didn't mind the changes I mean I, I do think you know that as as Craig said I don't think the front two got as much um uh services they could have had but they could they could have made more you know I think the goalkeeper made an exceptional save well a couple their goalkeeper made a couple a couple of exceptional saves particularly one early you know, I think in the first in the first half yeah first half from Andy Dallas you know, we whipped it across and he, he, he got the slightest of touches to put it round the post. I thought Dallas did well to, to collect the ball, turn and smack it. Um, but, you know, it's seven changes. We saw on Saturday that we needed a number of minutes to start getting getting it together and, you know, playing as a team. Seven changes. So it doesn't surprise, it doesn't surprise me at all that uh, it took us a while. I thought we grew into, grew into the game. I thought their first goal, I thought, were. Well, Shambolic from the officials. I'm going to. I'm going to try not to keep going about the officials this season, John. It's been <laughs> why, why two, did you think two that? shows so and two rounds. What was, what was the reason for that? Because I didn't. I personally didn't th- see much in it. You didn't see. So you, you didn't see a blatant push then on our defender. A it, was a light, it was a light shove at best. I think it was oh, a yeah, oh, light shove. Oh, get over so, yourselves. No, no, no. Listen, what a I pair think... of wallies. Oh, Jane, we're dealing <laughs> with wallies here. What a pair of wallies. I think it's because he's so small, the reason why it looked more effective. That's why I think he, the thrust was so far forward, to be honest with you. I think if it had been bigger, he'd have been able to take it and carry on. I think it's because he's so small. It looks I would have been fuming if that goal had been rolled out for us. I'm just yeah, gonna be honest. I really oh, would. I've been watching it. Were a, it cl- back, a clear push. You flattened oh, a clear oh, push. Andy, it were I mean, good work well, but... from Tram here. They've oh, scored, okay. you know. Look, look, I'm not, it, I'm they've not got gonna... a good set piece, and you know. I'm not gonna rubbish Tram here. It's the official, that official for that thing. You know, not not about putting red, uh, yellow cards here then everywhere for goodness knows what. Um but yeah, I just thought that were a poor decision. And I want to be upset with it given against us because it were a clear foul. The second one, I thought their second goal were a foul, but it wasn't. In looking at the highlights, it wasn't. He, 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 oh, he you know, the, the, Theo Chapman will learn from that, you know, trying to drip, you know, when, when you're at the edge of your own box and you've got the ball, you've got control of the ball, whack it. Don't pranny about where you get it whacked. Yeah. Um, and the second goal took it really, really well. Took it really Yeah, it's a lovely good. finish from Sam Taylor, to be fair. Really nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was. It, it was. And in between, you know, in between time, you know, Herbie. I don't know how Herbie's got in. I had to watch. Well, I thought I, I'd got my head down when he when he shot the first time. It's only because I've seen replay, and I thought, "How's that going in?" Not sure how that's done in the net. Well, you know, goalkeeper. I don't know what goalkeeper were doing. I don't know, I don't we'll know what he was doing. I, I don't know what he was doing. It was just like this. I don't that, think. That were, I do not think that. Joe Murphy will be happy with that. He's, a, he's their that goalkeeper. It, that is literally I, I, flapping at it. By the way, any wall. I'd like. I'd like to think it would like me on a Monday night when they asked me to go at net at six aside. Right, you might think it were a mistake. I just think Herbie placed it beautifully. So it were all, all right, down to Herbie. All right, right, right. The power took it past him, didn't it? <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, yeah. And then obviously our equaliser. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to take some credit for that because I said to my brother, as soon as added time went on and there were a fair bit again, I put, I put my cat flap on and said, I've got my lucky cat flap on. 
so much going to happen. So that were down to me. Oh, uh, what uh, it? Uh, it, it went down. just being at right place at right time then. No, no, it was me putting me out of you know, making a good well, run, to... Winfield <laughs> putting a great ball in, Jello setting it, it up. Raiden's positioning or all of that, it was, it was on this art. I'll tell you one thing. I, I wouldn't know. Always... She's like, it's that art, <laughs> Raiden, it's just that art. He knows where I, he knows where I think of him. He finished it. He finished <laughs> it. A poacher's goal, he finished it off beautifully. And I'll tell you what, it, it, Charlie Wingfield impressed me. He he, he got cramp a couple of times. And it, it were, you know, he could not have done more. You know, he... Uh, he did really, really well. T- I'll bet when, when Jallo put that ball through for him to run on to cross, I thought, oh, marvellous. I can hardly move when I've got to run and get this ball and put a cross in. Mm-hmm. Or a cross. A credit. That kid's a credit. So, well done to him. And, yeah, obviously, he didn't put a great goal in. I took my hat off for penalties. What a mistake to make. That's all I'm saying. So, it's your off. fault, then? I'll take, I'll take the, the rough and the, oh, I'll take the, rough and the smooth. I'll take the rough and the smooth. I thought my work had been done, Jane. I thought it were all over. You know, I thought my work had been done, so work I left it. Never done, Andrew. Never. I know. So uh, <laughs> you know, it yeah, was... Jane. It was great though, weren't it? See young lads fight back because basically oh, when oh, we were two yeah, on down in that second half, yeah, there were no, none of and... senior players really on, apart from Casper Lapata. Yeah, and, I mean, and... seven. It's a lot of changes that in a squad, but also, are we that bothered about the cup? Are we? Oh, we'll just see what we got and see. Ah, well, if we get through, we get through. Like I I said, it, it, it just yeah. It, it gives it gives other pe- it gives other other lads a chance to see what the med on, doesn't it? It gives yeah. the new manager also some insight in these players as to what he's got to work with as a whole squad. So this Caribou Cup is like your uh, ideal opportunity, could you say? Come on, then now show me what you med on, what what you got. Uh, and clearly, um, that's what the, that's what you know. That's that's the aim, I think, of this cup. Because, like you say, it does clog fixtures up. Your league is, I think, where it's important. I love FA, you know, I love FA Cup and stuff like that. But your league is where it's at, isn't it? That's your. Um, for us, we're where we're at at the minute, I think. Yeah. It's, that's, it's particularly that's early it. in the season, having that fixture fixed congestion yeah. if you get through yeah, a couple of rounds. That's is your, and especially when you've helpful. got a fixture congestion with what I would call. A group, a bunch of players that are not, um, are not experienced. You know, we haven't got much experience in the team. You know, and they might not be quite ready for the cup matches galore and league matches yeah. and whatever. Um, so it will just see. It, I think he's just seen what he's got to work with because he's, he's he's a new face in terms of club. It yeah. may have answered some questions he's got though because. Yeah. Obviously, transfer window is still open. He's seen what depth he's got now, what players could possibly step into the first team. I think Winfield possibly could if he's needed at left wing back. I don't think it's a, he's a week in, week out type of guy, obviously, but if you need somebody with energy for the last 20 minutes of a game, he can come on and do a job. I think he played that well. Um, Jallo as well. I'm, I'm going to be screaming for this lad till Kyle's come on. I think he's he got, got serious talent. He come on and he changed that forward line. The, the, I said Oli Shaw and um, Andrew Dallas didn't do much. I thought he'd come on and he, he was busy. He was busy and so were Marsh, to be fair. I thought them two played better to the two all night. So. Yeah, yeah. Our old shallow, is he? He's not. He's not. Our well, old is he's, you're good enough, you're old enough, Jane. That's what I always say. I, I 17, assume man. he's about 17. Yeah. 17. I'll be a bairn, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, yeah. the pass he played. He's, the he's to you, Jay. For Winfield, Winfield, that pass. I mean, he didn't even <laughs> look. He just knew. Yeah. He didn't even I, look. I, and he, he whipped it so far in front of him that Winfield didn't have to do anything. You yeah, know what if I mean? I, if I was Collins, which I'm not, and he knows better than me, but if I was, I'd definitely be keeping him in around the first team and, and seeing if we can give him a bit of game time when the opportunity comes around. I'd, I, I wish he'd have started yeah. the game because I was really excited to see him. But I understand that he's trying to get Dallas and Shaw up to scratch so they can be sort of, you know, in and around the first team as well. Um, another another shout thing, out, uh, just before we move on, on, is Ben Killup. Got to give a shout out to him, the keeper. Gets injured in penalty shooter after saving a penalty. And what? And then just decides he's going to take a penalty. He just whacks it in, top bag. Great penalty. <laughs> Absolutely love, big fan Great of that. Penalty. Just like, says to Jack Shepard, now, nah, mate, now, nah, you're next one. I'm over this. I'll tell you what, <laughs> so, Joe, I was, quite, I was quite impressed with Tranmere because at 1-0 and then 2-1, they weren't hanging back or 1-0. They weren't, they, they weren't trying to play it out. They, they kept going for it. And uh, they, made a, you know, they, they made a game of it. So 
you know, it, it was going from end to end. It weren't um, and it weren't, support as well. It weren't like, boring. Oh, the support yeah. was super. I tell Brilliant you, for a Tuesday night. My, my brother's not been for a long, not not been for a while because because of, of work and what have you. But he said, for goodness' sake, I keep saying it. Get some egg boxes to quieten down that North Stand because it's too flipping noisy. It, <laughs> Cotney's well, 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 cat, Catherine, calming me, I can, down. I can hear, I can hear you from, uh, I can hear you, y'all lot being rowdy tonight from from our house because we don't live that far away now. No, no. And I says, I says it's not us. I says, it's Trambia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I there you go, Trambia. So, well done, Trambia. Well done to Trambia. Good luck to them as well. Good luck. Yeah, hope they get a decent team in second round. Even though I'll probably be jealous if it's someone really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good luck. Good, good luck. luck. Yeah, we got it. Uh, moving on. Uh, one thing I wanted to discuss that we didn't get a chance to discuss uh, yet is we've had a couple of games now with the extra extra time, where basically it's like the World Cup, where refs are just adding on all the time. What do we think to this, guys? Let us know in the comments. I really, I'm really interested to see how you're finding it. Um, it definitely makes it a later night and a Tuesday night, particularly when it goes to penalties. Um, but for me, I'm a massive fan of it. I think for us, for I mean, a young side with fit legs and, you know, obviously like Craig said, maybe need a bit more strength in depth, yeah. but I, I really like it. I like the fact that, you know, it feels like a longer game as well. It feels like, you know, sometimes you can have those games where it's nit- it's nitty and gritty and it's teams trying to keep you out and it's frustrating and they get over the line just from frustrating you. I don't feel like with the extra sort of 15 minutes of the ball being in play, I think they've got less chance of doing that, Jane. Um, yeah, I think you. Yeah, I, 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 I sort of agree with you on that one. It uh, probably flows a lot better, which makes the game feel a lot better. And like you said, give don't get other side a chance to to get to you. So yeah, definitely an improvement. I, I can't. I, you've pretty much nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly I'm what sorry, I think. Jane. I didn't mean to take up all that. <laughs> all right. Look, <laughs> anyway, anybody so got anything interesting to add that I, I didn't say? I was going to say about the transport people going away from games. It's going to make it later for people. But as you said, particularly for transport, uh, public transport. So that's that's the only downside. What I will say is my son Jonathan looked at his watch on Saturday, and, and, you know, the first match against Vale. And uh, normally matches, for, you know, if, if if you're away and you're watching, you know, you're watching BBC or Sky, whatever, for updates of scores and what have you, you're not going to, if they, if they do it at five o'clock, you're not going to get any scores. He looked at his watch at one minute past five, and in the whole of the EFL, the whole of it, three games had finished. So get get ready. So unless the BBC and Sky, whatever, put put their stuff back a bit, you're going to get and now for the classic five results, late late result, late result, late result. They're all going to be late results unless they put it back themselves. Yeah, so, there's going to have to you know, be some change. Some, I think yeah, some there's, testing there's ch- times. But it's better. About, yeah, you know, it's all yeah. going to be adapted towards towards this new rule. You know, people Got to have to it's adapt. Better. I think it's a better, it's better. match experience, isn't it? You just get more game time. You get to enjoy more of a game. You to play yeah. to watch football, aren't you? That's what. How many times do you get stuffed out, though? You know, there's 20 minutes left, the one goal up, and all you see constantly is ball going down, free kicks being given. Time wasted. And time just, just flies away. And now they know that the stopwatch is in play. It's going to be like, well, what's the point in faking an injury? Mm. Well, we've you benefited know? twice from it already. Obviously, we were six nil up in the Port Vale game, so I don't think we were in much danger of losing it. Then again, the ref did book some other time, yeah. at six nil. But we uh, don't we, start on referees, Joe. Don't start I'm not, on I'm refs. I'm just not making having an it. observation. Not he did book some time wasting at six nil. <laughs> Must yeah. I mean, there is. It was in the realms of possibility Port Vale could have come back and scored seven goals, but um, didn't look likely. Uh, and. Obviously, then we scored uh, against Tranmere in, in extra time in at halftime. So, so far, worked well for us. Um, right, let's move on. We want to get your comments. We love your comments. Please get in the comments and just give us your views on anything we're discussing. Uh, let us know what you think to the game against Tranmere. Get your British, uh, Bristol Rovers predictions in for the weekend. Andy, comments of the week. Drum roll, please. What, too, what comments have we got? We've got some lovely ones about Josh. <laughs> Oh, I've got some beauties. Our lovely Josh Everton, right. who's not with us with, tonight. With um, the predictions on the the first match, the first match, we we got ninety four predictions, which is good. Ninety four. Seventy two said a bounce the win. Nobody said seven nil. Nobody, absolutely nobody. Ryan Guest, bless him. I were rooting for Ryan because he said six nil, and you know it were only one. Where he said six nil. Work so. for extra extra time, Ryan. You'd have got three so, points in the so, prediction composition. So I bet I bet he was sat there thinking, flipping Andy Dallas, flipping egg. So nobody got nobody got it right. But like I said, 72, 
72 have got one point. When we come on to last night, oh dear me, 73 predictions, 73. 68 said a home win, four, including Josh and Tom Webster, said an away win. One person, and I had to dig it out, it was late on, one person said it would be a draw after 90 minutes, 1-1. One, one. So nobody... But, you know, we've had we had no winner winner chicken dinners. We've had no nobody. So it's all to play for. We've got another thirteen games, and it's all to play for. Nobody, nobody has got three points yet. So either it's one of them funny old starts to a season, or ninety-two people are rub- <laughs> rubbish at predicting. I'm not sure which it is. <laughs> oh, seven nil. Uh, Come on, Ryan. Ryan won nearly there. I felt for him. Good old Ryan. But, Right, I've got a few a few what's it's for you from uh, from shows. Oh my word, oh my word. Let me see. Look at some of these, Joshua. You won't you won't believe. It. Right, what well, first? Right, I've got a couple. Of, I've got one from Tracy. Ma- well, I said Tracy Martin's first. Let me do your Tracy's first. I'll, uh, I'll uh, just Tracy, do the one. Yeah. Ah, Tracy Martin. I'll just do the one. Let me find it with Tracy. Appears well, on the show quite regularly. Yes, let me do let me do the one with Tracy. Tracy said, I didn't see that result coming. Outstanding second half performance, three ones to the Reds on Tuesday. Right. Not only did she say it, she said it four times. So we've got to four predictions. Sure you got it. All right. There's no wrong with being thorough. Andy. Oh, I, right, you know, could have just Andy, been an accidental Andy, click. And I, I knew you'd stick up for a Jane. I knew you would. I knew you would. I'm not kidding. You don't have to. You don't have to stick up for it. So oh. apart apart from a couple on Josh, which I'll come to, I've got a few comments from other fans because we like to keep other fans on board and we like them to feel well important, even even though frankly they're not. So we've got sorry about that. I've got, I got a bit confused. <laughs> Port Vale fan. So we've got Philip Philip Bradshaw, Port Vale fan here. No vitriol from me. Last season at Vale Park, I thought Bansley were the best team I saw. Too powerful and fit for us. Would be delighted if you finished top. Uh, and that would make us not look so bad. So I think, you know, there's a bit of that in it for him. For, for, but, you know, what can you say? He did right. See, that's a nice that's kind of course we appreciate the, the comments from, from all you fans there. that are not Barnsley fans. <laughs> then we've got we've got an Ipswich fan that I think is called Simon Curtis, but it might be Curtis Simon, I'm not sure which, because you can't tell us, tell, can you, on, on, on YouTube? It's but Ipswich fan here, that's how, that's how you start. Delighted for you after how last season finished. What an incredible result. Top of the league, eh? Enjoy it. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> yes, Simon. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do for now. Right, and then we've had... I'll, I'll, I'll just break off from other fans. We've got Lee Fern. 3-0 to Barnsley, says last night. 3-0. Gobsmacked. Gobsmacked at Josh. What is he on? Honestly. Oh, but then David... Then David, Context to David this, if you says, didn't watch our last show, go watch the instant reaction from our 7 0. Basically, Josh said after we'd beat Port Vale 7 0, one of the biggest victories for absolutely years. I don't think I've ever seen Barnsley win 7 0 in my time supporting the Reds. Uh, I, I think it was, was it 1963 or something like that? Biggest opening day win for a team. Uh, and Josh said it were all right. <laughs> I'm going to score well, 7 against Huddersfield, but that's how old I am. Just saying. It's just miserable. David said, every every club needs a Josh to say grounded. Football can boot you in the belly. So that's stuck up for him. <laughs> but, but then we've got Jay Gassy, 63, bless him. He says, how can you have that Josh on these vlogs? He's so negative, it's unbelievable. 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 You tell him, Jay Gassy. And he said, sorry, he's got to go. Get rid. <laughs> Josh Get out. Josh rid. Josh out. Josh out. No, yes. I think he, I think his <laughs> mum and dad out. agree with it. His mum and dad agree with that. You know. I can't believe people. We love you really, Josh. Real. We love you really. Honestly, he's just I've done done got you all. He is hooking you in. He does. He does. Yeah, yeah. We, we're pretty certain that he. We know he know. is. We know he is. <laughs> oh, you're getting too much credit. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce this. Sikia seventy three seventy three, a forest fan. He is who loves Barnsley. I've been meaning to send a comment and wishing you all all the best and good luck for the new season. But work got in the way. Looking at the performance and the score lines, this is about Saturday. Um, it doesn't matter. It looks like this team won't need much, won't need much good luck. It's the first game of the season, so very, very early days. But the goal difference is looking great already. Hope this you can keep the momentum going and stay up at the top of the table. Come on, you Reds. Aww. And then our old friend, who's a 
Wednesday, uh, uh, no, he's not. He's a Leeds United fan, righteous one. I'm not going to quote him exactly, but he's put Jammy Bar Stewards. That's what he said. Bar Stewards. Family Bar -stewards. sure. Family sure. That's what, that's what I said. Bar <laughs> Stewards. Stewards that work behind bars. Jammy Stewards that work behind the bar, Joe. Don't get yeah, carried away. Don't okay, get carried fair away. Enough, fair enough. Right. And then thank you so much. I have finished. I have finished. Well, I mean, no, I'm not this is like, get me your top three or four. What's this? Another one from Ipswich. No, extra, extra we'll be time. following you all season. I'll be following. Glenn Anderson, who's a Luton fan, as we know, says good luck and good Evening, luck Glenn. from us and everybody at What's It. So we've got all that. So I'll leave it there then. Glenn, you'll be happy. I've got Carl Morris in my fantasy team and Collie Woodrow. So, you know. Yeah. That's a, just, you, you'd do all to curry favour, wouldn't you? You'd no, I, I, I really favor. like Luton or Barnsley South, whichever you want to call them. They're great. <laughs> no. Yeah. You gotta love Luton, you know. I mean, Jacob Brown's apparently going there now. It's basically, you know, for our, for our place, it's like yeah, it's our great. B side, it's like absolutely, our absolutely lovely. Well, they're not B side. It's 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 our, our side would be if we kept them all. <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, let's move on, then, guys. Let's look yep. ahead to Bristol Rovers. As always, we have got our prediction masters, the young twins, Isaac oh, yeah, and yeah. George, little Al and Andy. Here they are with their predictions for this week. It's back to the league on the weekend after we got knocked out of the Carabao Cup against we've... Tranmere on pens. We've got the gas. Oh, you've got gas? I wonder what that smell was. No, I mean, we've got Bristol Rovers. Oh, what do you think the score's going to be? I think it'll be 4-0 to Barnsley. I think it'll be 2-1 to Barnsley. If you think you're better than predicting than us, get it in the comments down below. You Reds! Right, there we go. That's what they think to Bristol Rovers versus Barnsley. It's time for you to get your prediction in the comments. Remember, the rules are very simple. If you get the correct scoreline, it is three points for you. If you get the correct win, draw or loss, you get a point. And if you get it wrong, you get absolutely no. We do two competitions. We do a mini competition, which is over 15 games. And we also do the overall season competition. So even if you're not doing that well, the mini competition, still get your predictions in for every single one of Barnsley's games, including all the cup games as well. It's well worth doing to try and win prizes. Generally speaking, the prize is a Barnsley shirt uh, with red all over on the back. Um, but I have some big news. Some big news. Rich really big people. news, right? Rich I announced people. this last week that we'd have some big news, and I am bringing you my big I news. I can't deal with okay. it. I can't deal with it. Go on, go, go. For the first mini competition of the season, just the first mini competition, which is the first 15 games, we are two games in, as Andy said earlier on the show, nobody has got three points yet, so it's all to play for. We have got an extra prize. It will still be a Barnsley shirt, but the extra prize is, thanks to our amazing friends at Smart Door Solutions, it'll be two tickets to sit in the box. We're us rowdy bunch from Red All Over Ooh. for Barnsley versus Fleetwood, which I think is the 28th of October. I probably should have checked that before the show, but it's Barnsley versus Fleetwood. So Barnsley versus Fleetwood. We have got the box, Smart Door Solutions box. Thanks to them. Amazing prize uh, for whoever wins our prediction mini competition. So it is well worth getting your predictions in. See, told you it was big. Uh, right. Let's do our predictions and thoughts on Bristol Rovers. So, um, yeah, Craig, I mean, first game of the season, a draw against Pompey. It's it's fair to say that they looked like the, they were under the cost quite a bit. Obviously, Pompey quite late on. Bristol going ahead through, surprise, surprise, Luke Thomas. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, for me, it looks to me like Bristol's probably good on the attack again. Maybe the defence, I imagine. I mean, Gas fans, let us know in the comments what you think. Might be the, the thing that they need to work on. 73 goals conceded last season. A few changes, but not massive changes. What what do you make to them? I think the changes are massive. I think the fetching James Wilson over played at Plymouth. Oh well, yeah, from season. Plymouth. Yeah, yeah. Matthew Cox, under twenty one, under twenties goalkeeper for England. He's he played really well um, the other day. Yeah. Uh, they've also fetched in George Friend, uh, left back. Um, obviously, Luke Thomas, um, Giovanni Brown, and uh, Connor Taylor from Stoke. So. <clears throat> that's four signings in their defence. Last season, they conceded a lot of goals and I think they've that, that that were their core belief going into this season that they need to strengthen where they are in, in defence. And I think I think they've done it. I think they've fetched some real, real quality defenders in there. Um, the game against Pompey, yeah, they were, they were. But they were up in 24th minute and it were more by design than rather, you know, they were willing to sit off and allow them to come on to them so they could counter-attack them. Um, I think they've got a real strong squad. 
Uh, I think Luke Thomas is going to just elevate him just that little bit more because he's his natural ball carrier. Yeah. We know how good he can be on his day. You yeah. know, a, a few owners were very unhappy that he didn't sign a new contract, but hey, oh, that's that's the way football goes. Um, I think I think I think they're going to push for playoffs this season. I think. I, I think they've got about the same amount of chances we have to be fair. Yeah. I've said I've well, said, we'll, really, I've, yeah. said I've said we'll come ninth, eighth ish. I think they're around a similar place. Oh, uh, by the way, you I've just realized you've managed to somehow sneak your way out of telling us exactly where you think Barnes are gonna finish this season. Uh, ninth well, or I'll, eighth. I'll say eighth. eighth. Um, We've got it on record now, Andy. Write down. That's big of him, isn't it? No, there's two there's two reasons why. There's one, there's the formation we're using. I don't think it's as strong as the formation we used last season. And number two, I just think losing Mads Anderson is just that huge. Unless we see um um De Givene, then I don't I don't know what to what to think about him because I've never seen him play. Obviously, he plays he played over in France. That like I say, everything's subject to change until end of the transfer window. But for me, they've got them in early. They've got they've got the players in early and they've got a real good group of players, and I think um, they're going to be anybody that goes to their ground. Know it's an hard fought slug, and that any ground that they come to, they're going to make it really difficult because counter attacking is going to be their thing this season, and they're going to be deadly with it. Yeah, Andy, like Craig says uh, on the counter, they did really well against Pompey and um, Giovanni Brown, and then a cross ball to lovely ball to to Luke Thomas, who put it away from so. A uh, decent start for him, really, because everybody's expecting Pompey to be there or thereabouts as well. So it's going to be, a, I think it's fair to say, no disrespect to what they are, but it's going to be a harder challenge for us. They're a good attacking side, aren't they? When you, when you think, you know, you, you talked about Giovanni Brown, who's, a, you know, in terms of football, is a, a really good player and he's, he puts himself about and he knows where the goal is. And he's got John Marquis at the side of him. I've always liked John Marquis. I know he's not as old as me, but he's knocking on a bit. He's in his 30s, but... You know you've been in a game when you played against John Marquis. You know he, he likes he likes to tip a lover. He um, he does he does. But you know it was a sort of player a couple of years ago. I wish we'd signed. You know when when he went there. I wish we'd signed him from Doncaster because he's a he's a quality player. Yeah, you yeah. Put them t- you put them two together up front, and then as 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 you both said, add Luke into all that who yeah. can fetch the ball and carry it. Um, I just hope that Luke keeps trying to pass it rather than shooting, and we intercept it a lot because, and they've got a from what I could see on Saturday, they've got a young defence. You know, in general, they've got some young defence, including the goalkeeper, but got some good players there. They looked a lot stronger in defence against Pompey, and towards the end, Pompey put put them under some pressure, but they held out all right against them. I know, you know, I know, they, you know how it finished up, but they did they did all right. So. They look like they've improved no end. Decent signings um, and, a, and a strong all-round performance. And yes, they, I, I agree that they could well could well be up there. If we start poorly against them, like, yeah. like we did on Saturday, we'll get punished. then they'll score. Yeah. They'll yeah. score a couple because Definitely. they've got players that can put it in the net, a number of players that can put it in the net. Mm. So, you know, we hopefully we've got that out of system. We don't let them come on to us and try and battle it out and then work as well into the yeah. game. That we're at them. We need, we need to that. We basically get we them. need to we need to hit ground running and uh, mm. try and get one or two in before they get warmed up, type of thing. Yeah. Try and get yeah. Us, yeah. get them up back foot. Yeah. Well, let's do us predictions then, guys, to finish the show because I'm ready for my tea now. I'm going to be honest, I'm starving. Chicken and chips tonight. Yeah, smiley chicken faces. and chips. Uh, oh, I no. don't know if I've got any smiley faces in. Might have to no. go to the shop. Oh, what? Very got for tea. What you said, a lad from Bath. Important question. Me, I've, I've already had mine. I had spag ball, so spag ball, nice, oh, Andy. Okay. Teriyaki chicken with stir fry. Uh, Jane, prediction for Bristol I'm Rovers. I want to say chicken salami gyros, me, everybody. Oh, lovely, lovely. Oh, great, can't go wrong. Uh, predictions, like Andy said, it depends if we if we can hit the ground running and get one in onion bag before uh, before they do. I reckon two one Barnsley. Greg? Uh, I think we're going to lose 2 1. I think it's going to take us too long to warm into the game. And by the time we do, they'll have scored and we'll be playing their game plan where they just can't attack us our game. And I, I ain't seen enough um, from us to be able to break a team down yet. Oh, seven. you rather turn in disguise. We seven oh, goals. I've right, not right, seen us guys. break anybody down. We didn't seven need to break goals. them down. We didn't need to break Port oh, Vale down. Days. The defence were absolutely uh, oh, a shambles. 
The defense. Oh, um, oh. Come back, up. Josh. Watch, 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 one ball over the top. One ball over the top is not breaking a team down. That's a seen... team in completely disarray, and they can't figure <laughs> out the lines. Just Have in you case seen how tall Casper is? They'll not get one over the top of Casper. You see how tall he is? They'll not get one over him. He's a brick, he's our Casper. Uh, Josh will be back egg. later this week with a, an away Thank end God. As well, so, Thank um, God. So, yeah, Josh will be back uh, if, you, if you check out the channel. I think probably on Friday, and then we'll have Al back next week. Um, Andy? 2-1 to Burnsley, easy. 2-1. Classic. Andy, uh, yeah. Andy special. Ooh, right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for, I'm gonna go for a, a two-all draw. Goals oh, in it. That's safe. I agree with Craig that's that they've boring. strengthened, but at the back. But I think that they're still finding the feet as as we are at the back, and I just think there'll be goals in it. Luke well, Thomas has got a score, hasn't he? See, the way <laughs> I see it is this, this is last season. This is us. This is them. We've gone there. They've gone there. So I just, I just think it. And it, 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 either team could win. Let's be honest. But I just, I just think. Just gonna, think but you still, you still think us. that after a seven nil win on opening day, you still yeah. think that we're yeah. I thought it. I mean, it is only Port, one result, but I, I think it was more Port one. Vale being absolutely rubbish when they went one 0 down than us being emphatic. You're so, a disgrace. You're a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. I, it, it worked out to do with it was because Port Vale were poor, seven nil, and it's the opposition because the opposition weren't good. Right. We were clinical. What Look, you- Port Vale couldn't do anything about that first goal. It was a superb interception, oh. sprint down across, an inch perfect cross, and he smacked it in. And then, you know, you get others where, you know, Kitchen, flipping it, Kitchen's goal, Dallas's goal, absolute things of beauty. Not just because the opposition level ain't good. I thought you knew about football, Craig. You disappoint me tonight, Do you know Craig. what percentage, me. What, how small the percentage right, is for a team to you, score? Every I don't get too goal monkey. Goal it's target. the same, isn't it? Isn't it, Joe? Isn't it, Joe? Same. Same. I, I, I'm, I'm just disgusted, Jane. Disappointed. I'm, I'm not upset. Honestly? I'm just no. I'm disappointed in him. I'm not being honest. I, I ask what I think is going to happen, not what I want to happen. So that's what I think. Cool. You're right to give your opinion, cool. Josh. Uh, Craig, you're right to give your opinion, Greg. Ooh. You're right to Craig, even if it's rubbish. Ooh. You're right to give it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I'll defend your right way. to say your opinion, Craig. Jen, it's it's popcorn ping in microwave yet? Did it look? Did it? Oh, best <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to leave it there before it gets too heated. Um, Come back, Smithy. You, I need you. you. I need you, you Smithy. Ne- next week, at instant reaction face to face. Hope so. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, have a great week. So, like I said, Josh should have his away end coming up this Friday, which will be really great to to, to find Everybody out more about in. Bristol Rovers. Josh, Josh fans everywhere, and, tune in. Yeah, so tune in, Josh fans everywhere. Really and... depression hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's all right. I think you'll find it hard to find out who Barnsley fan is oh, <laughs> in, a two, in a two-person conversation. It's a nightmare. We love anyway, him. Anyway, anyway, we love him. Uh, let's uh, finish up the show. Um, yeah, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and let us know what you think in the comments. And we will catch you later in the week. You Reds. Bye.